<laughs> oh, it all started with the Big Bang. It all started with the Big Bang. Bang! What? Yes, little kitty. Everything we look around, right from the grain of sand to trees, to mountains, earth, galaxies and the universe, it was all formed after a Big Bang. Still confused, friends? So, in today's episode, let us learn about the beginning of our universe and shed some light on an interesting question. That is, what is the Big Bang Theory? Zoom in! The universe. It has fascinated humanity so much that cosmologists have devoted their entire lives gazing into the space to find the answer to the most important question about the universe and how it evolved, its actions in the past, present and future, and how it came into existence in the first place. Sorry, I got a bit carried away. A lot of scientists assume that the universe began nearly 13.7 billion years ago with a massive explosion of an extremely hot bubble that was thousands of times smaller than a pinhead. This idea at first was jokingly referred to as the Big Bang. But as the time progressed and evidence piled up, the concept and the name stuck with the scientific community. After the explosion, the universe that we know today was born. And with it, time, space and matter came into existence. And it all happened in a fraction of a second. Yes, friends, in just a matter of seconds, the universe grew from smaller than a single atom to bigger than a galaxy. And it kept on expanding at a phenomenal rate and continues to grow even today. As the universe cooled down, the energy converted into particles of matter and antimatter. These two opposite types of particles fought hard and largely destroyed each other. But some brave matter managed to survive. Please note that just one second has gone by so far since the beginning of everything and the universe had already grown into 100 billion kilometers and is cold enough to form more stable particles called protons and neutrons. Over the next three minutes, the temperature fell below 1 billion degrees Celsius. Now the universe got more cold to allow the protons and neutrons to come together and form its first atom, the hydrogen. After millions of years, when the hydrogen gas clumped together and gravity started to put it under pressure, stars and galaxies began to form. Their radiation began dissolving the stable hydrogen gas into plasma that allowed visible light to pass. And finally, there was light. Trivia time! Did you know the single super concentrated point or bubble which later became the universe before the Big Bang was called the primeval atom or the cosmic egg? Also, in one of the possible scenarios for the ultimate fate of the universe known as the Big Crunch, the universe will eventually stop expanding and start collapsing in on itself. Then, however, another Big Bang might happen. Hope you enjoyed today's episode. Until next time, it's me, Dr. Binox, zooming out. Pooh! Ah, uh, never mind. Coming soon, Guardians of the Milky Way. Milky Way? Milky Way isn't like this, kitty. 
I understand your confusion, little kitty. But Milky Way isn't a fantasy land full of milky products, but a real thing. And what is that? So friends, in today's episode, let us launch ourselves outside the atmosphere and into space to explore an essential part of our universe called the Milky Way. Zoom in! In the vastness of the universe, you will find a hazy spiral ring of white light that looks like milk spilled across the sky. The spiral ring isn't milk of course, but a galaxy to which the ancient Romans called the band Via Lacteal, which means Milky Road or Milky Way. Yes, my friends, the Milky Way is a galaxy. And what is a galaxy? It is a large cluster of over 100 billion stars, planets, gas and dust all assembled and held together by gravity. Even our solar system that includes our very own Earth, neighboring planets and Sun is a part of this galaxy we call the Milky Way. Astronomers believe that our Milky Way galaxy is approximately 13.6 billion years old and it is so big that light takes 100,000 years to cross from one side to the other. The center of the Milky Way galaxy is tough to see due to clouds of gas and dust that blocks our view. But scientists believe that it is a supermassive black hole called Sagittarius A star that swallows anything crossing it. And it is very much possible that this black hole may be the source of gravity that holds the galaxy together. But like many good things, the Milky Way will meet its end as well. Yes, my dear friends, it is predicted that the Milky Way has 4 billion years to live as after that it will collide with our giant spiral neighbor Andromeda. Yes, this isn't any science fiction story but a reality. Currently Andromeda and the Milky Way are about 2.5 million light years apart. Fueled by gravity, the two galaxies are rushing towards each other with a speed of nearly 402,000 kilometers per hour. But don't worry friends, because even at that speed, they won't meet for another 4 billion years. And with the collision, these galaxies will merge together to form another giant elliptical shaped galaxy. Trivia time! Did you know the Milky Way is a part of a cluster of galaxies near each other that is called a local group made of about 30 galaxies? Yes, and the three largest galaxies in our local group is the Andromeda Galaxy, the Milky Way and the Triangulum Galaxy. The other galaxies are much smaller in size and two of them can be seen with the naked eye from countries south of the equator. Also, did you know our Milky Way is as old as the universe itself? Yes, the age of the universe is about 13.7 billion years and our Milky Way has been around for about 13.6 billion of those years. You know what they say, old is gold. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed today's episode. Until next time, it's me, Dr. Binox, zooming out. Ah, never mind. Hey friends, don't you just love a warm sunny day? From afar, it seems like the sun is equally bright no matter where you look from. But that is not the case. If you look closely at the surface of the sun, you will see some areas darker than the others. 
and sometimes you might even see sudden bursts of brightness on the surface of the sun. These are what we call sunspots and solar flares. Let me tell you something more about them. Come on, zoom in! The sun is a dense cloud of bright and hot gases. It holds immense pressure within itself. And sometimes this pressure becomes too much. So the sun has to let go of some of its energy. When the sun does this, some areas on the surface become even brighter. These bright areas are called solar flares. And they disappear very suddenly. Solar flares usually take place around the active parts of the sun's surface, such as the sunspots. These are areas of high magnetic activity on the surface of the sun. Although they produce light, it is not as bright as the area around it. So the sunspot appears darker. They are actually cooler than the rest of the sun. When a solar flare occurs, it also releases different kinds of energy particles like electromagnetic energy, electrons, ions, etc. These particles usually reach the Earth in around a day or two. But don't worry, they don't harm us because we are protected by the atmosphere of the Earth and its electromagnetic field. The sunspots were even used in ancient times to figure out that the sun rotates. When people looked at the sun, they noticed the spots change and realized that the sun must be rotating. Trivia time! Auroras, popularly known as the Northern Lights, are caused by the solar wind hitting the Earth's atmosphere. Sunspots were observed as far back as 364 BC by astronomers in ancient China. <laughs> now, wasn't all this amazing? Who knew there is so much going on on the surface of the sun? As they say, don't judge a book by its cover. Who knows what is going on under such simple looking things? So friends, until next time, keep your binoculars out and your eyes open. Who knows what you might find? This is me zooming out. What do you call the death of a star? Well, that's an easy one. It's called a supernova. Supernova? Supernova, Kitty. Oh, you've never heard of that word before, Kitty? No. Well, there's no need to worry, my dear, when Dr. Binox is here. So let me grab this opportunity and teach you and our friends out there about this natural phenomenon called supernova. Zoom in. Stars, they come in all colors, shapes and sizes. Like the blue giant, red giant, red super giant. Even our sun is a type of star called G2V yellow dwarf. But despite these differences, most of them meet their end with a supernova. So, what is a supernova? Well, a supernova is a massive explosion that takes place at the end of a star's life cycle. In other words, it is the death of a star. But the vital question is, what causes this explosion? AKA a supernova. Well, a supernova occurs when there is a change in the core or center of a star. This change can happen in two different forms with both resulting in a supernova. 
First, let us look at the type of supernova that happens in the binary star systems that consist of two stars orbiting around their common center of mass. During the process, one of the stars, a carbon-oxygen white dwarf, takes matter from its partner star. Eventually, the white dwarf gathers so much matter that makes it difficult to digest and causes the star to blast, resulting in a supernova. The other type of supernova happens at the end of a single star's lifetime. As the star runs out of nuclear fuel, some of its mass flows into the core. Eventually, the center part of the star is so heavy that it cannot withstand its own gravitational force and it becomes like a nuclear time bomb. Finally, the core collapses and all the matter and radiation blast out, which results in the monstrous eruption we call a supernova. But fortunately, not all stars end with a supernova. Even our own sun is a single star, but it does not have enough mass to become a supernova, or else it would have been a significant threat to our solar system that includes our Earth. Trivia time! Did you know a supernova burns for only a short duration? But it can tell scientists a lot about the universe. Yes, one kind of supernova has revealed to scientists that we live in an expanding universe, one that is growing at an ever-increasing rate. Scientists also have discovered that supernova play a vital role in spreading elements all around the universe. Yes, when the star bursts, it shoots elements and debris into space. Many of the elements we find here on Earth are made in the core of stars. These elements travel on to form new stars, planets, and everything else in the universe. Hope you enjoyed today's episode. Until next time, it's me, Dr. Binox, zooming out. Ah, never mind. Ooh, that looks like a black hole. Oh no. I shouldn't be here, but I'm not going to go before I tell you about black holes. Come with me, zoom in. A black hole is formed when the core of a star collapses and the star explodes. Therefore, we can say that a black hole is born when a star dies. When a massive star reaches the end of its life, its core starts running out of fuel. The core is no longer able to hold the star back, resulting in its collapse. This gives birth to a mini black hole. With gravity running wild inside it, the black hole starts eating up everything that's left of the star. And it all happens in milliseconds. Even before the star can realize what's happening to it, it explodes. The explosion releases a tremendous amount of energy, even more than our sun can produce in its entire lifetime. Whoa! Isn't that crazy? Hmm, let me tell you a secret. You could turn into a black hole. Yup, the computer you're using, me, or anything around you that has matter has a Schwarzschild radius, also called the gravitational radius, which is the radius of the tiny sphere, into which if a mass of an object is compressed to fit in, its escape speed would be equal to the speed of light, which is way too much. But chances of you turning into a black hole are rare because of the tiny size of your Schwarzschild radius. Stuff that gets too close to a black hole 
get sucked in because of the super humongous gravitational pull. So, nothing can escape a black hole, not even light. Hey, have you ever wondered what would happen if two black holes collided? Chances are that they might become one big massive black hole or probably put up a fight and send one of them hurtling away. The bigger, the mightier. <laughs> Trivia time! Time runs differently near and inside a black hole and this has a lot to do with gravity. The nearest black hole to Earth is 1600 light years away. Don't worry friends, that's too long a time. But you make sure you don't take that long to tune in next time for more fun facts. This is me zooming out. Run faster little kitty or else we will miss the bus. Oh no! Goodness me! We missed it! Oh no! Well, no worries little kitty. We will go for the picnic next time. But I wish there was still a way to reach there on time. Maybe a shortcut. Hmm, maybe a tunnel. Or maybe a wormhole. A wormhole? Yes little kitty, a wormhole. Hey friends! I'm sure you must have heard the term wormhole before. But do you know what it exactly is? If not, then don't you worry my curious friends. Fasten your seat belts because in today's episode, let us travel into this mysterious passage in the universe we call the wormhole and explore its deepest secrets. Zoom in! So, what is a wormhole? To understand what a wormhole is, first you need to understand what a black hole is. Because a wormhole is actually two black holes that are connected like a tunnel between two places in space. By going through the wormhole, you could travel immense distances across space faster than the speed of light, even if the two ends of the wormhole were very far apart. Yes, my friends, you could quickly go on a day trip from one planet in a distant galaxy to another planet. Imagine if you had one end of the wormhole at home and the other end at school. Then you could just step through the wormhole at home and arrive in the class without worrying about getting late. Unless you are too lazy to get out of bed. <laughs> so, a wormhole could be a cool thing to have around. But the problem is, as far as we know, there are no wormholes like this in our universe. And the only place we can find them are on paper. Yes, my friends, we haven't found any evidence of them existing and we don't have a clue about how they are formed. However, the existence of wormholes is not restricted by our current theories of the universe. So we can say that they do exist in theory. You might be aware of the theory of general relativity. Published by famous scientist Albert Einstein in the year 1916. It explains gravity, which is what keeps us on Earth and keeps the Earth orbiting the Sun. This theory also mathematically describes the wormholes. So, how to understand wormholes through theory? Firstly, we need to know about something called space-time. We often imagine space-time as a flat, stretchy fabric sheet. Everything you see around in our universe exists on this hypothetical space-time fabric sheet. By imagining about the fabric sheet, we are envisioning something called a two-dimensional surface. A planet wandering on the sheet can choose two kinds of movement, going front and back or going left and right. But in reality, 
space is three-dimensional, which means that planets can also jump up and down. In fact, there's also a fourth dimension and that is time. And by putting all the dimensions together, you get what we call space-time. Now, let's get back to wormholes. Imagine we want to travel from one place to another on this imaginary space-time fabric sheet. Say, from Earth to a faraway planet. Even with the fastest rocket, this journey could take thousands of light-years to complete. So, this theory proposes that what if we could fold over the fabric so that our Earth and the faraway planet line up and then make a hole connecting the two layers of space-time. Then we could have a shortcut tunnel to get to the planet without having to take the longest route. Even though a wormhole is just a theory, I hope someday it will turn into a reality so that we could explore the wonders of our enormous universe. Trivia time! Did you know the wormhole is nicknamed as the Einstein Rosen Bridge? Yes, that's because in 1935, Einstein and physicist Nathan Rosen used the theory of general relativity to elaborate on the idea, proposing the existence of bridges through space-time. Hope you enjoyed today's episode. Until next time, it's me, Dr. Binox, zooming out. Ah! Never mind. <laughs>